Greetings from Jim, AG6IF. It is January 26th, 2016, here in Southern California, and I'm going to show you a little bit about how to access a serial, the internal serial UART pins on a Ubiquiti Air router. Have you ever been uh, trying to upgrade your Ubiquiti or other device, but this is specific for Ubiquiti, and somehow you brick your unit? Well, there's a, uh, there's a soft method to pull the firmware in, hold the reset button down, power on, hold it down for 20 seconds. The unit will enter TFTP mode. I've got a couple videos on this already. And if you uh, use uh, TFTP and you send a new firmware to the device, but once in a while it's even broken worse than that and it won't accept it. So you want to get into the unit, which will void your warranty. And you want to connect up the serial cable, a 3.3 volt TTL USB serial cable. Uh, you can get it from Adafruit. I think it's item 954, something like that. It's about 10 bucks. Uh, one end's a USB, the other end is like that. Okay, and then uh, using PuTTY, for example, a serial terminal emulator, you can actually um, communicate with this device. So here's my air router. That's what they look like. This is the HP version. It's got an antenna connector on the back. You remove two of the feet, which is, uh, there's one, the little rubber uh, feet pulls off, both of them, and pull the two screws out that are in there. Then the unit comes apart. Kind of simple to take it apart carefully. And the lid, you set the lid aside here. And that's what you're ending up with. You're ending up looking at the top of the board right here. Uh, the header that you need on this particular model is right here, over here, the UART. And some, some units you may have to solder pins on or whatever, but in this case, it's pretty easy. If you look really close, pin one is here. I'll get my finger out of the way. Pin one, there's an arrow right right in here. I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see this or not, but let's try. There's an arrow right in here. That's pin one. And this is numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So our serial pins on this particular unit are going to be three and nine, and the ground goes on eleven. All right, three, nine, and eleven. Well, what 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 that gives you is um, TX, RX, and a ground. Now I always double check my cable before I hook it up. So I've hooked a jumper between my TX and my RX. It it happens to be a resistor, but that's not what I I don't need the resistor. I need the lead. So what you do is you run putty. Select your COM port or in Windows, in Windows, in, in Linux, which I'm using, select your serial device. The baud rate is 115200. Okay, I've already done that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to short these two pins together because I want the signal, the data to come out one, loop around and go back in to my screen my screen okay so I'm going to use a, uh, the blade of the screwdriver and I'm just going to lay it across here like so right like that now if I type here's my putty screen if I type something I should see it see I'm typing I'm just hitting the keyboard and I'm getting that now if I were to disconnect my jumper like so let me see here remove the screwdriver and I can remove the resistor now I've got no jumper in there and I should get no characters and as you can see no characters so I know the data is going out the out the port and back in and I know so I know I'm communicating properly with this USB well, let's see if I can get this camera in the right spot again all right so what we're going to do here is I'm going to place I'm going to place my serial cable on pins 3, 9 and 11. Actually, generally you don't even need the ground. So uh, in this case, 
my green wire it goes on three so this is my green wire right here I'm gonna place this on pin number three one two three it's that one right there right there and the white one I'm gonna place on nine so it's three four five six seven eight nine and that is there so I got green on three and white on nine now I'm going to go ahead and put the ground on 11, so that will be this last one here. But generally, you actually don't even need it half the time. Most of the time it works fine. So, that's what we end up with. Let's see if we can get a, get a look at that. 3, 9, and 11. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fire this box up. And what you're going to, end, what you're going to observe, we're going to go to the screen, and you're going to see, hopefully console messages popping up okay box is lit up all right so now we're seeing the actual console as the Linux box boots up now once you get this part done there are different steps you take to either create your part recreate your partitions or TFTP or data file over uh, generally, that's I'm not going to go into that right now. The, the procedures vary depending on what, what is wrong. But this is the first step in repairing your box if it's broken so the bootloader doesn't you, let you use the consumer uh, interface, which is holding down the reset button. All right. So we're booting up now. This actually is a, um, a different firmware from the Eros, Eros that comes with the Ubiquiti. So uh, I've done the upgrade already. I call it an upgrade anyway. <laughs> All right, so that is your console port on a Ubiquiti uh, Air router. That's what it looks like once again. Three, nine, and if you want to hook the ground up, put that on 11. And this is the HP model, the Air router HP. Uh, it will void your warranty, but if it's broken anyway, who cares? Give it a try. So get yourself a serial cable. You can also use it on your Raspberry Pi on the GPIO pins. It's kind of nice having a console port on a Raspberry Pi. Anyway, um, so hopefully this helps you repair your Ubiquiti router. By the way, the UART pins on the other products that I've played with, uh, they exist on the uh, nano stations and some of the rest of them also. Uh, so that uh, gives you a little insight into the box and booting up. So. Uh, basically, we're up running and init complete, and basically, uh, there you go. So, this one is not broken at this point in time because I've already fixed it. I upgraded the firmware, the box didn't come up properly, and I was forced to either send it back, which I didn't really want to do, um, as it would be under warranty before I open it, or I'd rather fix it myself, especially if I can do it with the uh, help of some of the internet. So. Uh, thank you for watching. This is Jim, AG6IF, and Southern California. Hope you have a nice day. 7-3.